So if I only knew then what I know now, have any of you ever said that? I know I have. This age-old saying has been the subject of books, songs, poems, quotes, people who wished they would have made better informed decisions earlier in life. So would you live your life over again if you could take all of the knowledge and experience that you've accumulated over the years, if you could take it back with you? Now maybe some might say maybe, uh, some say no, nah, I don't really want to do it over again no matter what. Would you live your life over again if you had to leave all of the knowledge and experience here and you just started over? I think that would be a resounding no. I heard a few. For me, that would be a no way. No way. So this first, I got a few quotes today. The first quote says that life is a learning experience. All you can do is learn from your mistakes, but you can't go back in time. So the title for today's message is Understanding Through Experience. Now, this one hits close to me, so that's part of the reason I'm probably giving it. I didn't have any understanding when I grew up. I didn't have a playbook uh, whatsoever to make smart decisions. None of my friends uh, were very smart, so I didn't have any count wise counsel at all. So I just constantly and consistently made bad decisions. Another quote says that there is only one thing more painful than learning from experience, and that is not learning from experience. Now later on down the road, as I began to unravel the mystery of getting understanding, I didn't even really know what that meant. You know, you can't go by understanding. You can't order understanding through the mail. But scripture tells us to get understanding. In fact, in Proverbs 4 and verse 7, it says that even if it costs you everything, get understanding. What is understanding? Why are we told to get understanding no matter what the cost? Is it understanding on a particular subject? Is it understanding about anything and everything? Is it a one-size-fits-all answer to a very complex and complicated problem? Now, it may not have been big on my mind back then as it should have been, but now as I get older, I want to understand. I want to understand everything. I want to understand how things work. I want to understand how people think and act. And I even want to understand more completely how I think and act. And like I said earlier, I want to, I want to understand what's going on with our system right now. <laughs> because we have done everything that we're supposed to do back there. And it's still, it sounds crisp. It's like, it's like cracking a you know, little cracker or something. We can't figure it out. All I know is that understanding makes life so much easier and so much better when it comes to just about everything. So I get it now. Proverbs 4 and verse 7, I get it. So let's start with a couple of definitions of understanding. Merriam-Webster says that to have understanding is to have the power of comprehension, to achieve a grasp of the nature the significance or the explanation of something. Now, if you look at biblical understanding, the definition is more about the ability to perceive clearly or deeply into something, reaching deep down so that you can understand. As we know from Scripture, you can't just read the Bible and that does it for you. You have to study it. And it's, it's that way for a reason, as we know. So there is an effort on our part to gain understanding. You're not just born with it, like I said, and you can't just go down to Walmart and buy it. So how do we begin to achieve, to grasp, to acquire, how do we get this very important thing called understanding? Let's start with knowledge. That's an easy one, right? Easy but necessary. Knowledge is the collection of information and data. data. You must be willing to learn. You must have a willing and teachable heart to acquire knowledge and then move into understanding. Two ways you can acquire knowledge. The first is to learn and be taught. And that's part of the reason we're here today, right? 
to learn and to be taught uh, biblical knowledge. Edu education is the fastest way to acquire knowledge. Proverbs 18.15, you don't have to turn there, I'm going to zip through some of these scriptures today, but Proverbs 18.15 says that the heart of discerning acquires knowledge, for the ears of the wise seek it out. So knowledge through education is one of the quicker ways to, to gather uh, knowledge. <clears throat> the second is to grow in knowledge through experience. You learn, you live, you experience, you move on. You make that knowledge a part of who you are. Now this takes time, but it is also a very necessary and productive way to increase in knowledge. If you allow knowledge to become a part of who you are, experience will lead you into understanding. So where do we get knowledge? We get knowledge from everywhere these days. We get it from the internet, we get it from the TV, we get it from books, magazines, life lessons, experience, going through good times and bad times, and even watching and listening to others can be a treasure trove of knowledge, learning from others and their experience. My younger sister told me one time that I made her life a lot easier because she watched me make mistake after mistake and it helped her to make better decisions. So she learned from my experience and I'm glad she shared that with me, you know, because uh, I thought I made enough mistakes for both of us. If your goal is to find out everything you can about a particular subject, you have the resources. We know knowledge is increasing every day, but you can't get bogged down in a bunch of opinions and half-truths. In today's world, you have to search for the truth. You have to dig down deep to understand. And as we know, the truth is essential in acquiring knowledge. That's why we pair everything, all knowledge, with God's Word. And that's where the truth reigns supreme. Proverbs 9.10 says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. An essential part of growing in knowledge and the truth is to study God's Word daily in our Bible study. Pairing worldly knowledge with godly knowledge to find the truth opens many doors for you. It opens doors for you in understanding how things work, how things operate, understanding how people work, how they operate. Uh, you just pair these two together and you're going to have a lot better time. Proverbs 2.6 says that the Lord gives wisdom and from His mouth comes knowledge and understanding. So learning by experience means gaining insights and knowledge by doing. And this is our focus today. Gaining understanding through experience. Understanding is the application of knowledge. The application of knowledge is to understand, and let me say that again. The application, the action of putting knowledge into operation is to understand. You can read a book about something, but until you actually do it, you won't understand it completely. And I just recently looked at a message by, uh, I think his name was Moody, up in Washington. And so he had the uh, analogy of a, uh, learning how to do a stick shift, drive a stick shift. Now you can sit there and you can, write, you can read a book about it all day long, but until you get in that car and you smell the clutch burning and, uh, you know, and, and, and have that little scare where you let off the gas and it rolls back down the hill, you're not going to really understand it completely. I thought that was a great analogy. You can read the Bible about something, same thing, but until you actually do it and experience it, you won't completely understand it. So let's turn over to our first scripture today, James 1.22. James 1.22, it says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. But do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. In verse 25, but whoever looks intently, intently meaning earnest and eager 
attention. Whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Now let's turn over to Psalms real quick. Psalms 111 and verse 10. Psalms 111 verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and all who follow His precepts have good understanding. To Him belongs eternal praise. And I am reading out of the NIV today, so your Bible may say something a little different. Now, Webster's Dictionary says that precepts are a general rule intended to regulate behavior or thought. So if we see this through then, following God's precepts are a way of life that brings wisdom and understanding. Putting knowledge into it in action and experiencing it, now we start to see a more clear definition of what understanding truly is. To understand is to exercise knowledge through experience. To pair the knowledge of the world with the knowledge of God, the truth, and live it, this is a big part of how we gain all kinds of understanding. So knowledge and experience combine to produce understanding. Now, to better know understanding, let's look at a contrast for a moment. Foolish behavior. Foolish behavior is characterized by the inability to use judgment, discretion, or good sense. It can also be characterized as ridiculous behavior or an inability to act as a rational human being. Proverbs 14.29 says that whoever is patient has great understanding, but one who is quick-tempered displays folly, foolish behavior. The foolish behavior, this foolish behavior goes against the process of acquiring knowledge and putting it into practice to gain understanding. Of course, it's not proper to call someone stupid or to call them an idiot or call them a moron, but you can learn from foolish behavior. And it's everywhere now. It's everywhere. It's kind of hard to believe what we're seeing these days. I think, you know, how can you get out of bed in the morning and live your life when you think and act like some of these people do? Now, I know there's a certain sympathy or concern to the path that some, uh, that some have chosen. But come on. Some of the foolish behavior you see now is simply ridiculous. And it's ridiculous by choice. One other quote says that it's too bad foolish behavior isn't painful. So foolish people hate knowledge. And part of the problem, according to scripture, is the tongue. The tongue will get you in trouble every time. The tongue is the mouthpiece for your heart and, and mind where foolishness can hide. Proverbs 15, 14 says that the heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge, but the mouths of fools feed on folly, foolish behavior. Proverbs 18, 2 says that fools find no pleasure in understanding, but delight in airing their own opinions. And foolish behavior now is flaunted right before our very eyes. There's not even much effort to hide it anymore. There's one side that looks for and embraces the truth, which I'm sure that we are all a part of here in this room, but there's another side that deny the truth and openly admit to having their own truth. Proverbs 3, 5 says, to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Your truth is a term that has been thrown around a lot lately. So I went to the Urban Dictionary to find out exactly what that means. So according to the Urban Dictionary, your truth is a con concept that is completely subjective and based entirely on individual perception or emotion without any grounds in fact. And I found that on page one of MSN search, which is very, very odd because they usually hide this kind of stuff. They usually don't put that out there like that, but it's a legitimate, it's a legitimate definition. So there's no need for truth here. This is emotional. This is personal. 
when you hear somebody say that that is their truth, we'll look out. Because just like they used to say in the old days, we've got a live one here. <laughs> but beware though, because you can tell someone that, 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 uh, that their truth is not the truth, but be prepared for a possible meltdown. Because there is little to no patience with someone that has their own truth. Another quote says, you can try and talk sense to a fool, and they will call you foolish. That is their truth. So why wouldn't they do that? They are now a divine being unto themselves in everything. The entire world revolves around them. So let's turn over to Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, verse 17. Ephesians 4, verse 17 says, So I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in their futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. So now back in the day, your ears might have heard this, you might have read it someplace, but now your eyes see it. And it is only going to get worse, if you can imagine that. Verse 20 says, That, however, is not the way of life you learned, when you heard about Christ and you were taught Him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. God's Word gives us clear instruction and knowledge in how we should conduct our lives. We are encouraged and directed to put off the old way of thinking and become a new person in Christ, to gain understanding. So let's go over three quick points on how to gain understanding. Three points real quick. The first one is remove sinful behavior so that you have room for understanding. We know that we should remove sinful behavior, but there, uh, there's uh, this uh, process called water displacement. And that's where if you put something in a large uh, uh, vat of water or something like that, it's going to spill out. And it's just like you have to have room in that, that vat uh, to put understanding in there. You can't just have a, have a full thing of water there and you know a full life of sin and try to put understanding in there. It's not going to work. Sinful and foolish behavior get in the way of understanding. And even Albert Einstein said, any fool can know, but the point is to understand, to live, and to do it. So if you don't have a plan to remove sinful behavior from your life, then develop one. Pray about it. You can't keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect change. Even the knowledge of the world will tell you that is the very definition of insanity. Job 28, 28 says, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to turn away from evil is understanding. So holding on to sinful behavior is equivalent to the lack of understanding. It is the very nature of foolish behavior. So is keeping God's law the secret to understand? To understanding? Let's turn over to Psalms 119. Psalms 119 in verse 129 there's a lot of wisdom in the book of psalms 119 and verse 129 says that your statutes are wonderful therefore i obey them the unfolding of your words gives light it gives understanding to the simple and this verse is talking about me because i grew up without understanding and the more I read the Bible, the more I was able to understand. The more I was, you know, uh, God was able to give me a simple person uh, understanding. 
So if it can, it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody. I sound like Paul, right? So let's turn over to Matthew 7. Matthew 7, verse 24. A lot of these are memory scriptures, but we'll go over them. Matthew 7, and verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yes, it, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. I don't want to be a foolish person. I don't want my house to fall with a great crash. I want understanding. So number two is ask God for insight and understanding. Let's turn over to James 1. James 1 and verse 5. Another memory scripture. James 1 and verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. Again, if you don't have a plan to remove sinful behavior from your life, then develop one. Pray about it and ask God to help you with this. Ask for thoughts and ideas. Ask God for understanding. Things that you might not have thought of before. Let's turn over to Matthew 7 and verse 7 as we're nearing the end of this. Matthew 7 and verse 7. Matthew 7, it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Barnes Notes Commentary says that these phrases signify to seek with earnestness, diligence, and perseverance. The promise is that when what we seek shall be given to us. It is, of course, implied that we seek with a proper spirit, with humility, sincerity, and perseverance. It is implied also that we ask these things which it may be consistent for God to give, that is, things which He has promised to give and which would be best for us. And most of all, for His honor, of that God will be the judge. Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish your plans. Get started. Get on your knees. Talk to Him. Say, I'm having a problem with this. Ask God, you know, what can I do? What can I do? Give me, give me the answers. Open your Bible. See what comes out. And, you know, uh, let Him in. Let God in to help you work on this. Now, the final third point, everything is a learning experience. You learn from your mistakes. You learn from other people's mistakes. You learn, learn, learn. Life is a learning experience, but only if you learn. Use your mistakes to catapult you to a different frame of thinking and behavior. Christ's sacrifice made it possible for us to learn from and fix our problems. So let's turn over to Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55 and verse 6. Isaiah 55 and verse 6, it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake, forsake meaning to give up, abandon, or to say goodbye. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the righteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them and to our God, for he will freely pardon. So it's not too late, brethren. We can turn it around. God's promise, God promises mercy and forgiveness if we abandon our sins, but we have to combine His knowledge and our experience. We have to do these things to develop understanding because, again, understanding 
makes life so much better and easier. This quote says, the key to learning is an awareness of your lack of understanding. So one final scripture, Proverbs 3, we'll close with this, Proverbs 3 and 13, 3, chapter 3 and verse 13. Proverbs 3 and 13 says, Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding. For she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand and in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life for all of those who take hold of her and those who hold fast to her will be blessed.